Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TTRTD webinar. This is Sarah Lam, and I am with the training and UX team in London. If you have any questions about this webinar, please feel free to contact us on email training ux at tradingtechnologies.com. Today, we will go through the steps of building a simple Excel spreadsheet with live data, working orders, fields, and time in sales. First, you will need to install and enable the Excel add in. The steps can be found on the Excel integration with TT section on our help library. There are some notes to mention before we start. First, all TTRDD formulas we use in this webinar start with equal RTD, TT.RTD, comma, comma, and ends with a close bracket. The second parameter is the name of the external server running the RTD server. Since the TTRTD server always runs locally, we can omit this value and simply type in comma comma without space. The formula can be written differently based on the language set on your Microsoft Office. For example, in Spanish Excel, the command would be RDTR instead of RTD. You can check the Microsoft support pages for more information. Second, the name and value of each property, such as column name and contract name, must match the TTRTD properties exactly, including letter case, spaces, and special characters. For a list of support fields, see the Excel RTD property section on our help library. Now let's build a spreadsheet with the live market data. First, we need to retrieve an instrument ID. We can do this by name method or instrument method. Take the example of ESMini September 24. With the name method, we will need the exchange name and the instrument short name in the formula. So the formula would be like this. Remember to start and end each topic with double quotation mark. Here, we retrieve the instrument ID successfully. With the instrument method, we need the exchange name, product, asset class, expiry, and the formula, and in that same order. So the formula will be like this instead. Here, we also successfully retrieve the instrument ID for this contract. You may also reference the topics to the other cells. Here on column A, I start by typing the headers so I know what information to enter later, including the exchange, product, asset class, expiry, and instrument ID. So I start from typing exchange, product, asset class, expiry, and then the instrument ID. In column B, I would type in the information I need like CME, ES, Future, and September 24. The instrument ID formula would look like this. Here, the B1 to B4 refer to the topics exchange, product, asset class, and expiry accordingly. If I hit enter now, the instrument ID also returns successfully. Next, I'll type in the market data properties needed. Say I want the bid price, and then the bid quantity, the ask price, ask quantity, high, low, last rate of price, as well as settlement. In cell B7, I need a formula to retrieve the bid price. So I use this formula. B$5 refers to the instrument ID. I put the dollar sign in front of the 5 because in this spreadsheet I'm building, instrument IDs are all on the row 5. So I want to keep the 5, the row 5, static. $A7 refers to the market data property, which is bit price in this case. I put the dollar sign in front of the A because the market data properties will all be in the column A. Now I hit enter and the bid price is retrieved. To generate the market data in the other cells, all I need to do is 
Move the cursor to the lower right corner of cell B7 until the black plus sign appears. Left click, hold it down and drag it, copy and paste it onto other cells. You can see now the data on Excel matches what it shows on TT front end. Building my spreadsheet this way allows me to make changes quite easily without touching the formula. For example, if I want to write over this contract, I can simply type in the new expiry in the cell B4. Then everything will be updated. I can also rearrange the rows without messing up any market data. Now we can build an other column with a spread contract. First of all, I'll just copy the whole column B onto C, so I do not have to retype a lot of things. Exchange and product would be the same. The asset class, I would need to change it to spread. For the expiry, I can of course type it in word by word. One way of doing that is also right click on the market grid of that contract. Go to rename instrument. Now just copy the whole name and paste it on cell C4. After I hit enter, I do not have to change the instrument ID formula nor any of these formula below. Now these market data again matches what I see on the market grid. Pulling in market data for the options contract will be very similar. Again, I will just copy the column B onto D now. Again, exchange and product, they will be the same. I will need to change the asset class to option. For the expiry, I may just go back to the market grid, right click, go to rename contract, copy the whole name again, then go to cell D4, paste it here. The options could be a little bit tricky because we would need to actually remove the product code from here. Now hit enter. Again, I have all the market data exactly the same in the market grid. Now let's take a look at building a spreadsheet with working orders. First thing we need to create is the order set ID, which is an essential cell. Here we use the most basic formula in cell B3. OS stands for order set. So this is the order set ID we are creating. I hit enter. Now I got my first order set ID. Because I want to pull all the working orders, I do not put any more topics after the OS parameter. Um, for example, you can add EXCH, the change equals to CME. So this order set ID will be pulling only CME orders. However, I would suggest pulling all the working orders to start with and use the filter function in Excel instead. I will show you how later. Next, we need to add the column names or the column headers. Here, I would put all the column names on row 5. The column headers needs to be exactly the same as how they appear in the order book. To save me some time in typo errors, I would make use of the order book export. In my order book, I created this tab already with the columns that I need to show in Excel. Now I'll right click on the order book, export rows as Excel. Here I open the export file. I select the column header row, copy it, and I'll paste that onto the RTD spreadsheet here on row five. We can now start building the RTD formula in cell A6. In this demo, I will use the array formula, which I find simpler to write and offers more flexibility when I am making changes. In this example, I will use uh, this array formula in A6. Orders here means I would like to put in the working orders. 
A dollar five refers to the column header in column A, which is time in this sense. So the dollar in front of five because I have put all the column header on row five, and every time in this topic, I would like to refer back to the column header, no matter is A five, B five, C five, and so on. Then I put the topic asterisk in there. Asterisk means everything, any orders,、uh, no matter whether it is buy or sell or if it is of a particular exchange. Dollar B, dollar three here refers back to the order set ID because in every formula for these working orders, I would refer back to the same order set IDs. That's why I put a dollar in front of both the column B. And also the column three. Here, the cell address means I am building an array table at the back with cell A six as the first cell of this array table. Therefore, here I put it as A one. Make sure that you have double close brackets here because that's what we need to make the formula complete. Hit enter. Now I have the first time as shown in the order book. Now I would just copy this cell across row six until where my last column is, which is here. So you can see now I have my、uh, first working order showing. Then I would drag down and copy the first row to the rows below. How many rows should I paste it to? It really depends on the usual size of your order book.、Um, I would say if you paste it to only twenty rows, for example, only those twenty rows would have the formula in there, and therefore pulling the working order data.、Uh, when you have more than twenty rows in your TT order book, then the rest would not show it up in the spreadsheet. So that is what I would suggest doing. Here, if you compare all the four working orders, they exactly the same here in my order book, including the status, for example, the hold orders. One optional step is to apply filter to the column header row.、Uh, it allows me to filter by market contra, etc. So I simply highlight row five and go to sort and filter on the Excel menu and apply the filter there. Setting up a page for fields is very similar to that for working orders. Only a couple of things would be different. First, instead of the order set ID, we need the field set ID, and in the formula, we use FS, which is field set, instead of OS. Then, in the RTD formula, we use fields instead of orders in the formula, but the rest are more or less the same. So, if I hit enter. You see, I have all the fields pulled out from the TT on my Excel. The TTRTD server also allows you to retrieve real time time and sales data for an instrument, providing details for each trade, including side, time, price, and quantity. It also indicates whether a trade is a block trade and provides the counterparty IDs if it is provided by the exchange. Before we start looking at the steps of building a time and sales spreadsheet, there are some notes worth mentioning. First of all,、um, the TTRTD server begins retrieving trade data only when the first trade occurs after the formula initializes. Historical time and sales data is available on the front end's time and sales widget, but not through RTD. Time and sales data are retrieved via RTD as per instrument instead of product as well. So we would need to build a time and sales table for each instrument. Then there is a maximum of one hundred rows to return on RTD. Bear in mind that via RTD,、uh, it shows every partial fill as one trade, hence one row. Here I have prepared the basic cells for retrieving time and sales data. Since time and sales via RTD is based on each instrument, we need the instrument ID, like what we did for the March data retrieval. Here, I type in the、uh, exchange, product, asset class, expiry, and then use the same formula that we used before to generate the instrument ID. 
For the、uh, column headers, I have typed in time, price, quantity, and the side. So we can start from entering the first Tommy Sales formula here in cell A five. T S stands for time and sales, and then dollar E dollar two, which refers to the instrument ID. Hundred here means I would like to retrieve the maximum hundred rows available for time and sales. Then the cell address. Now I got the first cell retrieved. Like before, we copy this across row, and then vertically down. Up to row hundred and four in this case, so we have the maximum hundred rows covered. You may as well apply the conditional formatting in the, for example, buy sell column. And、um, here I have added some colors in there, so when it, the cell value changes. The color would change as well, so it is easier for me to see which line is which. To create the、uh, time and sales table for an other instrument, one easy way is to copy and paste. And、um, so I highlight the five columns in here, paste it. First, I would need to change, say, product. Now the instrument ID updates. Then in the thumbnail, I would need to change the reference to the instrument ID, which is now K two. Also, the cell address would be A one here. Again, copy and paste it across the line. Also vertically. Down to row hundred and four, here you go. Hope you have gained a comprehensive understanding of the basic TTRTD functionality. Remember, if you have any questions about this webinar or any suggestions on the contents you would like us to cover in the future,、uh, please do get in touch by email. Thank you for watching, and look forward to you getting in touch. Bye bye.